FCC prosecutorial powers under scrutiny as the new NBA president stands a review of the anti graft agency's role is criticized. The FCC believes the senior lawyer is wrong. PDP in governor, PDP governorship candidate in Edo State withdraws case to stop his substitution as a party's candidate in the forthcoming election. Details of what happened in court today on the program. That's our focus today. Many thanks for joining in everyone. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television coming to you from our global headquarters in Nigeria and Lagos, of course, as we celebrate 21 years of professional broadcasting. I'm sure Okimbalo here. Well, let's take a quick look at some of your top political stories at this time before we dig deep into our major stories of the day. Political Radar on Channels Television. Here are your top political stories this time. The PDP National Convention will not hold in Port Harcourt. That's according to the recommendations of the Board of Trustees of the People's Democratic Party. The BOT, after its meeting in Abuja, decided to host the next convention of the party in the nation's capital and also directed the Ketika Committee to raise funds for the proposed convention hereby urges the committee to continue the good work of properly planning for the next national convention. Meanwhile, the Senator Sheriff-led faction of the party has however rejected the decision of the party's board of trustees for another convention. But Mr. Kairu Ojubo, who is the faction acting deputy chairman to Senator Ali Modi Sheriff, says the party's board of trustees' decision is wrong. He also says that the board has brought more crisis to the party than work at resolving the existing problems. As the leadership controversy in the national arm of the PDP gets more dramatic by the day, the wave of the storm has reached Ondo State. The Ali Motor Sheriff's faction has elected Jimo Ibrahim as the governorship candidate in the forthcoming Ondo State election. In the election, which lasted over two hours, Jimo Ibrahim polled 502 votes to win the election, with his only co-contestant, Mr. Alushala Ibishini, polling 41 votes, while 17 votes were avoided. We are going to ensure that this mandate that you gave to me today, I will defend it. Prior to Ibrahim's emergence, another aspirant in the party from Senator Ahmed Makarfi led national leadership of PDP, Barista Eyutayo Jegede, had also emerged as the governorship flag bearer for Rondo State. The governor of Abia State, Okezik Beazu, has flagged up the 2017 budget defense with the assurance that all revenue leakages will be blocked as he expressed dissatisfaction on the current size of state internally generated revenue. The governor said the current economic situation in the country calls for prudent management of government revenue. Mr. Beazu is, however, hopeful that the 2017 budget will have direct bearing on the policy thrust of his administration. And you're up to date. Those are your top political stories you need to know. Thank you so much uh, for staying with us, everyone. Where the crisis is rocking, the leadership of the People's Democratic Party at the national level is definitely having its toll on some part of the states. Uh, most of the states in Nigeria and the leadership are factionalized. You find the McCarthy faction or the Sheriff faction, wherever you belong, you try to find your stand. That is the case for most of the PDP candidates. Well, in Edo State, that is what is playing out. Uh, uh, playing out. Uh, where there are two different primaries, that, where two candidates also emerge, the Makarifi candidate Osage Ize Yamu had prayed the FCT High Court to stop INEC from substituting him as the party's candidate. 
Today, an FCTI court which struck out Mr. Sage Izeyamo's suit on the grounds that Izeyamo's camp have notified the court of their desire to quit the court tussles. The judge, Justice Olukade Adini, struck out the suit following a notice of discontinuance by Izeyamo's counsel. Adini, in his ruling, also refused the application to award costs to the defendants but struck out the case from the court's list. The court said, and I quote, this suit is hereby struck out from the course list of this court. I shall not be awarding any cost in order to enable the plaintiff reconcile with the de third defendant, end of quote. So, of course, uh, our eyes are on Edo State, where, of course, we are monitoring what is happening politically, of course, and what is happening is that channels television we engage with top contenders you can see godwin obaseki of apc osaro naiwa abga amos arelego of labor party and osage Izi yamu pdp in a governorship debate on the fourth of september 2016 7 p.m is a sunday in partnership with uh, Enough is Enough Nigeria. Edo Decide is the hashtag. So you can follow and keep tabs, keep a date and uh, mark it in your schedule. Do not miss it. It's going to be some of uh, the greater conversation that you've seen politically in Nigeria. Robust conversation around how Edo State will be taken to the next level and who will be the next governor of uh, the South South State, um, the oil producing state, Edo State. Well, that's how we leave it now. We talk about that situation in Edo State and we give you latest happening there. Let's move on to some other issues we're following today. The new NBA chairman, uh, Mr. Bobaka uh, Mahmoud, uh, an assumption of office, said he will help fight corruption. But part of his speech, uh, in his inaugural speech, advocated for the review of EFCC's roles. EFCC is his Nigerian main anti graft agency, is asking for the removal of the agency's prosecutorial powers. Earlier today on our breakfast show, uh, Sunrise Daily, Mr. Abubakar Mahamoto, Channel Television, what he believes should happen to the EFCC several years after it was established. Take a listen to him. The prosecutorial powers and investigative powers are two very wide powers. I'm a prosecutor, I've been a director of public prosecutions, I've been an attorney general, and I'm very clear in my mind as to the extent of this powers and the need to regulate them and to make sure that these same powers, if they have to be exercised by one agency, there are clear institutional safeguards. And if there are no, you see the, the decision taken by prosecutors is, is very important decision in any democratic society. They are at the bottom of guaranteeing justice, fairness, and democratic governance. You can't have those decisions being taken uh, without any control, without any uh, safeguards, and without any regulatory framework. This is extremely important. Now, so the important thing, in fact, is not whether I am right or wrong in this. The important thing is that we as Nigerians must learn to debate these sort of issues and discuss them openly without uh, any hesitation in terms of uh, being scared that somebody will intimidate you. So there's absolutely no reason after 14 years or 12 years of operation where the issues around uh, the organization of the EFCC, there is no institutional form that should be sacrosanct in any democratic environment. Every institution should be scrutinized, its performance, its uh, responsibilities continually subjected to discussions. Well, the FCC don't quite believe in what Mr. Mahmoud is asking for. Well, we know that the major, the spine of President Muhammadu Buhari's uh, government's plan and program is to fight corruption to his news. But tonight on the program, to speak further on this is Mr. Ben Ikani, a prosecutor with the EFCC, a former Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in Kogi State, and he was a former director, assistant director with the NDLA. Uh, is uh, here with me in the studio. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you very much, and thank you, viewers. All right, we go on a short break, and when we return, Prince Ikani here will be telling us the need for. Uh, reforms in the EFCC and whether or not the prosecutorial powers of the EFCC should be taken. That's our discussion today. Join us again.